Wii Sports Bowling is arguably the best bowling game ever created. Not necessarily in terms of its realism or the depth of its mechanics, but simply due to the fact that just about anyone could pick up and play it, and like most of the minigame lineup in Wii Sports, have a damn good time doing so. Now the Switch has a few good bowling games, none of which have had any real inclination to play, but I'm sure that there are a fair few decent ones out there. But today on the channel, we're checking out Bowling Fever, a Baltoro game which, given their track record, could be a strike or could be a complete miss. So drop a like, subscribe for more Switch content, and let's pick up those spurs. So Bowling Fever drops you into a main menu with a funky little acoustic ditty, and by all accounts it's a reasonable looking menu, which is navigated using the ZL, ZR and thumbstick, and you have a number of different game options available to you. There's also a ball shop menu here, allowing you to select your loadout of up to 6 different balls, and a shop where you can spend cash to unlock a bunch of additional unique balls, each with their own stats, as well as a few different power-ups which we'll get onto shortly, though I couldn't see anywhere where you could unlock additional pins or lanes, as in the eShop description. First up in the game's modes though, you have Practice, which does exactly what it says on the tin, allows you to practice your shots with as many balls and frames as you like, and it's a good way to get a feel for the controls. But the controls themselves are relatively simple, and unfortunately, there are no motion controls, so everything is done with a thumbstick. Playing a shot though, is done by first positioning your ball on the lane, before holding forwards to bring up an arrow, and aim in the direction that you want to launch it. On the left side of the screen you'll see a power meter which repeatedly fills and empties, and you simply need to hit the A button to take the shot. But you're also able to steer the ball whilst it's in motion, and this post launch shot control allows you to curve the ball to get the perfect angle. But it's also pretty unrealistic, as you can actually move it left and right as much as you want without any kind of restriction, which significantly lowers the difficulty. Now the other standard modes in the game are the single player quick play and the tournament modes, each of which allow you to select from a variety of alleys, each with their own themes, but none of which affects the gameplay. And the quick play mode also allows the use of power ups purchased in the shop, which are single use items and allow you to increase the size of your ball for one shot, put up barriers or split your ball into two to pick up those spurs. The tournament mode on the other hand is your standard 10 frame affair against 3 AI controlled opponents, with no power ups and each player taking it in turn to bowl, though thankfully you're able to skip your opponent's turn and depending on your placing at the end of it, you'll also earn a set amount of cash for your efforts. The gameplay itself is perfectly fine though, it plays well without any real issues apart from some buggy re-racking on one of my shots and it's enjoyable enough. But in terms of challenge, with the ability to manipulate your ball whilst it's in motion, it's really not that difficult to get strike after strike, if not to pick up those spurs, though it does still take a little bit of timing and skill. If you're wondering about the AI though, there are no difficulty settings in the game for them, and I purposefully played a game badly just to see how the AI reacted, but unfortunately they were still racking them up and knocking them down, which really is a shame as I feel like having adaptive AI in a game like this would really make it a lot more enjoyable and maintain a decent level of challenge for players of all skill levels. Now when it comes to the multiplayer, again you can select your alley and number of frames, and while you can play up to 4 players locally, unfortunately each player requires their own controller, so no pass and play here, but thankfully you only require a single Joy-Con to play the game. Finally, the game's challenge mode switches things up a little and adds a little extra variety to gameplay, challenging players to hit a certain number of pins down using a limited number of balls whilst attempting to avoid various obstacles blocking the shots. It's a nice little addition and some of them are relatively challenging, but not overly so, and you'll also earn a little bit of extra cash from completing them. And my only real gripes with this mode is that, firstly, it's quite difficult to watch both your power meter and the obstacles at the same time, some of the obstacles obstruct your view after you pass them, and unfortunately, all alleys share the same set of challenges, but you can replay them repeatedly to earn more cash. 
Finally, the visuals and audio design of the game aren't all that bad either. We get a nice selection of alley themes, each offering a little bit of visual variety and music to match them, though the space tune does get a little bit irritating after a while. Still, not too shabby on the audio and visual front. All in all though, Fever Bowling is a decent little bowling game and if you're into your bowling games, from what I've seen you could do a lot worse on the Switch. There's a decent amount of replayability with it, with a bunch of different achievements to unlock and earn a ton of extra cash with, and the challenge mode, though a little limited, does add a little something extra. Though it is a shame about the lack of motion controls and the AI controlled opponents could have really done with a little customization. But it's a decent one to play with friends and I'd say that the price is reasonable, though you may want to wait on a sale with it, which being a Baltoro games title, will no doubt be pretty frequent. With that said though, will you be picking this one up? Are you a fan of bowling games? And what if any are your favourites on the Switch? Let me know down in the comments section below, and as always, drop a like if you enjoyed this one, and consider subscribing to the channel for more Nintendo Switch content. But for now, thanks to the patrons of the channel and to you the viewers for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.